Hey Jerry, it's Aiden here with Camberg. One of the things I really want to do today, which is Saturday, which is the second day of the Overland Expo show here in Flagstaff, Arizona, is show you around some of the vehicles that we have that are Camberg equipped. First, I'm going to take you to our Bronco, and then we're going to walk through the show and check out some of these vehicles. So, the Bronco we brought out here, um, you can see right up front here, it's like equipped with full Baja Designs lights. We've got a linkable on there, we got the fog pockets, the XL80 Pros, and we got the linkable up on top of the roof as well. Uh, rims and tires, we got the KMC wheels with the general 35 inch tires here, and the suspension's equipped with all the Fox coilovers and um, our billet aluminum upper control arms out the back same thing and then up top here we have the go fast camper and as you can see these really cool billet accessories they have uh, we have some clamps on the side for this awesome ladder that those guys make and you'll see that antenna there we run a full rugged radio communication system and then inside the bronco here um, it's equipped with a uh, full scosh system, so we got their new Matrix, which is a full uh, accessory switching panel. Uh, we have the different mounts in here, different power sports mounts they have, uh, so it's all equipped with that. And then um, out the back, we'll take a little peek. It's kind of hard to open up the whole back door here, uh, but it's fully equipped with goose gear. We've got the goose gear table that folds down. Uh, very, very functional off-road vehicle. So now let's go walk around, take a look at some other vehicles we have. All right, so this is a Westcott Designs built Toyota Tundra. Uh, Jeff Westcott's known for some of the mounts. He has like a cooler on the back of this Tundra, some bumper hooks and stuff. But what's really cool about this Tundra that he just picked up from our friends at Finley Toyota is it's running our new billet aluminum upper control arms out front. And then in the back here, he's running our new rear billet aluminum links. Why don't you come down here and take a pan of those? So you got the billet aluminum links under here. Um, and we we have the billet upper links up under there as well. We also have provisions for some of you guys with these Tundras that got the airbag suspension uh, where we have a bracket on there that keeps that all working. So yes, this will work with coil spring and airbag. Uh, let's go walk through the show and check out a few more vehicles. So we're over at my buddy Brian's company, Goose Gear. If you need an outfit and store, he's the man. Let's go check out his Ford Ranger. Awesome. Doing like a time. Keep it moving. All right, so you can see his Ford Ranger here. It's equipped with general tires. Let's check out the front suspension. So he's got the coilovers in there with the cambric billet upper control arms, which is pretty cool. Yep. But Brian, show, show us what you do. Yeah, what we do is we do uh, interior systems. So we do interior storage, seat deletes, we do drawer systems. Put all your stuff, have your stuff organized, nice and clean. Patches so you can access stuff. Do it for every kind of vehicle you can imagine, pretty much. Forerunners, Broncos, you name it, we've got it all covered. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, thanks, thanks for showing. Man. We'll see you back Appreciate in a bit. It. All right. Yeah, see ya. So we're over here at the Magnaflow booth. Uh, they have our Raptor on display here. Uh, this one's equipped with our long travel front suspension with the slapper arm, all Fox shocks, including the three and a half inch bypass shocks. Also running the GFC camper, which is their full system here. Uh, general tires on KMC wheels, full Baja designs. Also on the rugged radio with some Deaver Springs out back with the air bump kit. Uh, outfitted all internally with all the Scotia accessories. And then we have... Hey, 
Hey, so this is my buddy Richard. We've known each other, I don't know, for too many years. Yeah. Never too many, but you know what I mean, a lot of years. Um, been involved with MagnaFlow with Camberg since the very beginning. The first Ranger race truck that we were racing, Richard got us some mufflers and we were testing them out. What did those come off? Like a Honda Civic or something? Oh man, back then, I don't know if I remember that far, but yeah, it was well before we were making our high performance off-road type stuff for those applications. Yeah, so it was a lot of fun. We were like really putting those things through the paces. And that's, you know, we're one of the small little elements that have helped these guys develop such an amazing product. But hey, we're out here and uh, let's talk about your Camberg suspension and the mods you've done to your vehicle. Here. Well, first and foremost, uh, we're talking about uh, upper control arms. I mean, that's pretty much your guys, you own that market. If you want a high performance product that's for pretty much anything that's meant to go off-road and go off-road good, uh, your UCAs are where you have to go. And you've uh, put together your prototype on this one, which has the Heim joints up top to really help stiffen up and get rid of that squeak and squawk you get with the uh, bushings and whatnot, but it really just firms up everything. Uh, and then we've got a very large uniball. You guys are using a larger uniball than pretty much anybody out there. Uh, but the big part of all that, especially on the Colorado platform, was it got me putting the lower control arm into its neutral position instead of all the way forward, which really messes with the steering geometry. And I was getting all kinds of toe in and toe out under compression. Uh, I'm now able to keep that in the proper location and take that upper control arm with those adjustable himes, give me that six degrees of caster I like to feel for that return, and it drives the way it's supposed to now. I'm not chasing things that I think are phantom inputs where I'm into a corner and it starts to lean in, now I'm pushing more input in, now the back end's coming out. Uh, it's just made the driving experience much more accurate, and that's really what it really changed the whole front end with just the upper control arm. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting that Richard brings that point up because we're advocates for more caster with bigger tires, especially being in the dirt, because what caster is is your tires just don't turn flat. They're actually angled back, so imagine a motorcycle or any bicycle, there's fork rake, and that fork rake when you turn has the tread of the tire biting into the ground. That's the same application on a truck here, and it's funny because out here in the overland world, we get people like saying, hey, what do you have with less caster so I can fit bigger tires? And we try to explain to people, it's not about the bigger tire, it's about the properly sized tire that cycles up and you're gonna have clearance, but more importantly, the handling of these vehicles, especially with all the extra weight. And uh, as you can see on this truck, Richard's outfitted this out very methodically, where he's got the right kind of racks and the right kind of boxes on the roof. Um, he's got a nice cab high shell and he's built his own interior. So what would you guesstimate the extra weight you've added to this vehicle? Oh, uh, no guesstimating. I was very much so in tuning the suspension, getting the right height right, uh, working with exact numbers. On my quick loadout, which is uh, these weekend events where I'm out for two or three days, it's 880 pounds with all the gear I carry. If I'm going on a longer thing where I'm carrying food and all my cooking materials, it's up to about a thousand pounds. Uh, that's me included is that payload weight and that's at the maximum for this chassis. So it's, it's right there at its limits. Yeah, and so like Richard just said, it's at the maximum so when you actually read what the manufacturer recommends for hauling around, he's maxed out, and that's you know power, load capacity, etc. We also do suspension for special ops. So when you think of like our Navy SEALs overseas, uh, we do a lot of the Toyota products. So the Toyota Prado, the Hilux, and the Land Cruiser, and they make those things like blast proof and bulletproof, right? So there's a tremendous amount of weight, and that's where we've come up with making these replacement spindles. Why we do our upper control arms and also some rear suspension components and that's why it's so important to properly set up your suspension out here so hey man I just want to say thank you again yeah, thank you we're gonna walk him by Sam's truck yeah. is Sam around here right now yeah he's out there cooking some lunch awesome so let's go check out Sam's rig he's got this awesome rig he's got this awesome overland company building all kinds of rad racks and all that stuff and uh, we might get lucky and be able to grab uh, a bite to eat So here we are at Sam's rig right here. Sam, you out here? Yes, sir. Come talk about your truck here. So we got Sam out here, and uh, he makes the racks that holds all these accessories and all these products. And uh, he has the Fox suspension on here, and he had a different type of control arm, and you know had had some handling issues. So he swapped out to the Camberg arms here. Um, so this is a 1500. Yes. What engine do you have in this one? 5.3. Yeah, so 5.3, 4x4 truck. 
Uh, he's on the Black Rhino wheels. Um, but why don't you tell us about your company and what you're bringing to the space? Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, one of the things that I wanted to focus on was uh, the full-size trucks, the abundance of Tacomas, Forerunners, and there was really nothing for it. So I wanted to make a universal platform that can hop from truck to truck, skew counts, keep down, and something that's versatile. And what I did, I wanted to go the far, farthest you can with overlanding, and then anybody can scale back. So any attachment, angles for lights, multiple molly panels, and just really versatile. And the biggest thing is modular. And if it's modular, you can grow with it, you can change it, you can integrate the current products. On my rack now, currently, I've had to drill zero holes because the molly panel selection that I made, yeah. after looking at 40 of them, I drilled down to about four, then I created a whole pattern, and that's what I came up with. And I've had to drill, again, zero holes. And so some of the characteristics are simplicity of grab handles, lights that we integrate for, for trailing, marker lights at night, uh, in the dust when you're trailing, people can see you. Uh, super versatile, again, long for the, for the full-size trucks. We make them super, super, super strong with road tracks. And in the back over here is where kind of where it all started. So I have a few things with electronics here, but by and large was I wanted a versatile molly panel. I wanted it integrated with the bed for strength. And in the back here, one of the key components was is that there still wasn't enough, I felt, places for uh, attachments for industry goods. So now I created an internal molly panel as well. So now the standard is roughly four. Yeah. I have now eight in the same space. And because of the angles that I've created, you still get your entire bed back, down lighting, and then you have the capabilities here. And then now I can hide all the wiring. Because I got a lot of wiring and things going on. You can actually conceal them, hide all the wiring for all your work lights and what have you, and it's good to go. And the big key feature for me was tunnel cover. You have a lot of well, goods underneath right? there, and sometimes oh. upwards of about, oh, I probably got about six grand underneath here. Yeah. So you can keep it clean, keep it safe, concealed. Yeah. Uh, it's really worked, and we partnered with Roland Rock for that uh, about nine months ago. So we're a good partnership and we've been you know sailing ever since so yeah so this yeah. is uh kind of back to my next build on my gen 3 raptor and i feel like guys that have been in the space a long time you know we come from a heavy desert racing and pre-runner background so we want to haul ass and go fast have a very comfortable ride but at the same time we still want a truck and so on my gen 3 raptor build you're going to see me going with a hard cover over the back uh, because there's security, it keeps the elements out if it's raining or snowing, and it keeps the eyeballs off the gear that we're actually uh, towing around with us. So, as you see on this rig right here, uh, very well thought out racking system. Uh, it's also located right around the corner from Camberg in Huntington Beach, California. Such an awesome truck. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks yeah, so much. We'll see Thank you in a bit. Thanks, guys. So we're over here at our friends. They have this radical brand called Timbo Tusk. They built the Scottle. So this is like the off-road walk. And I'm talking when you cook pancakes, fajitas, whatever you want, this is the gear that you need. So let's check out their truck. So introduce yourself to hey, the camera. I'm Brian. Uh, I'm Jerry's son. This is my dad's truck. Not uh, my son. The other Jerry. The other Jerry. Um, it's got like 14 turbos on it. Uh, it's got big wheels. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so yeah, actually come on in here, over here. You see the suspension that he's got? Of course, Camberg. Um, what did he go with in here? He went with the Bilsteins. He has got the Milestar tires just put on. Uh, so, yeah, so on the suspension here, I want to hear where you guys go and how much you've used this truck off-road. Oh man, so I think his most recent trip was to Death Valley. And of course, one of the worst roads in that place is Saline Valley Road. And he said he was flying down that road just fine, doing 65, because that's the type of road where yeah. you gotta go quicker to make it feel better. Um, and in my truck, I have your suspension too. And I did about 150 miles one day in Death Valley, racing around the place. And uh, we, we get Death Valley, Mexico. Uh, we're planning a trip later on this year to, uh, to go down the Baja Peninsula a little bit. Very cool. So, uh, yeah, we. we so, how trucks. important is it to you uh, the suspension, right? Like getting places quicker and smoother. Well, 
it's security. You know, you if you feel comfortable in your ride, you can more, you know, you enjoy yourself a little better. You enjoy the obstacles a little better. You're not so tired. You're not worn out by the time you get there. You know, it's overall, it makes the experience better. Yeah. So, these guys in the Overland space is as legit as it gets because they live this, like every day, every week, and they go to all the shows across the country. Uh, they make the number one cooking unit in the country. Uh, so popular. Every booth you go to where like the legit Overland guys are, they're using the Scottle. Why don't you show us the Scottle and what it's all about? All right, yeah, let's step over here and we'll take a look. So this is the Scottle right here. Yes. We just cooked on it, it's a little dirty. But uh, it's a lot dirty. So it's a Harrow disc. It's seasoned like cast iron. Uh, it's non-stick. It's indestructible. It's got adjustable legs on it. So if you're sitting down with the buddies, you can sit down and cook at the end of a day. We got some accessories to go with it. We got a leg table, which is always at perfect beer height. Always ready. Always there for you. Um, cook anything you want on it. The more you use it, the better it gets. And the best thing about it, it's made in America. That's right. So where are you guys located? We're out of Anaheim, California. That's right. Okay, so not too far from you guys. Um, so yeah. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you so much. Good to thank see you. you. Let's go check out some more rigs out here. Take care, guys. So we're over here at Baja Designs, scientists of lighting, and believe me, they are. They make the best off-road lights on the market. Everyone knows it, and if they use other lights, they wish they had it. So we're checking out this Toyota Tundra in the booth here. Whose Tundra is this? So Jason's not here right now, but this is his Tundra. Why don't you explain what lights are on this truck to the camera and let us uh, get a little education? Yeah, absolutely. So we got our S. 40 in here. It's an SDHQ uh, uh, brackets. SDHQ brackets up here with our LP4s. LP6s down here. Another S8 30 inch bar here. Dual XL sports. And then squadron sports on the sides. Fog lights. And then obviously work scene lighting all the way around. Yeah, so when you're thinking of lighting on these vehicles, you see all these different lights and it kind of could look a little overkill, but the reason for all these different beam patterns is it's really about focus. Some of these lights are way out there down the road, so you know, whether you're in Baja or on these long rated, uh, long distance graded roads that are just flat for, call it a mile, these lights are like laser-like lights and they just beam out there. And then you got the corner lights that are set up to project out. You always notice on the A pillars, we're not pointing them straight, we're kind of pointing them out. And that helps a lot when you're making turns because it's lighting up way down past that turn. And then there's all these different beam patterns they mix up in here where you can see the laser light um, spot patterns here and then we got this diffused pattern here which spreads the light out so they have these in amber and clear uh, and they've got seat lights all around here so if you check out the table you can see they have these really small lights so these massive lights here and then if you go check out this dirt bike over here imagine the gnarly ass dudes that are going through Baja at a hundred miles an hour on a dirt bike and they're racing to try to over all the Baja. So we'll a bit more about Baja design. This is what they're running. Some bikes might only run two. So when you think about this motorcycle hauling ass through the middle of a desert at crazy speeds, that's what they're running. We're running two of those on the A pillar and usually around four to six of them on the front bumper. So you can just imagine how much light that is. So hey guys, thank you so much for having us over here. All right, we'll see you soon. Mr. Magna Flow again, <laughs> and Hot Rod Condesor. <laughs> All right, so just passing by here, here's another awesome Tacoma. I don't know who owns it, but once again, equipped with Baja Designs lights. It's got these nice general tires mounted on KMC wheels. And of course, Camberg and Fox suspension. So take a peek under this thing while I check out the back. 
Yeah, so out back here, he's got Diva rear springs. He's also got the Fox DSC shocks. So this is a lot of what you see out here at the Overland Show. So these trucks are very similar to what goes on in the desert, except they just get set up to go camping. And if you guys do go down to Baja or do go out to the desert, why not go out there and stay the night, set up your truck and actually enjoy it, camp out. All right, let's see what else we can find here. I just noticed walking by this red Bronco is a set of red Kemberg upper control arms. Take a peek at these. Up under there, he's got a custom set. Do you see those? And then out the back here, it's probably on the red rear links. There they are up underneath of there. All right, so this badass rig, it's on black rhino wheels. Camberg suspension is owned here by Jason from Relentless Fabrication. Tell us about your rig. Yeah, thanks Jerry. So it's a 2021 Bronco. Uh, it's got our armor on it front to back basically. It's our development rig. Um, got it lifted a little bit right now interim with just a spacer lift until our Fox coilovers show up. So we want to throw on your billet parts on there. They're amazing. So thank you for those. And uh, of course Baja Designs Life, Black Runner with wheels, Mickey Thompson tires. Um, Badlands, Sasquatch package, pretty much every option on it. It's been a, been a great rig for us. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks for showing off that rig. We'll see you soon. Thank you. All right. All right, let's talk the animals here at the show. We've got dogs everywhere out here. This is kind of a cool community with pets. It's making me want to get a big rat dog, so I want to know from you guys, make a comment. What kind of dog should I get next? Thinking of a Belgian Malinois? Let me know what you think I should get. I kind of want like a, a badass dog that doesn't take shit from the wolves and coyotes or the mountain lions out in the wilderness. I have two little small dogs right now. They're great family pets but they'll just get devoured out there. So I'm thinking of something like smaller and tough and that's why I'm kind of thinking of a Belgian, but I want to hear from you guys what you think. Belgian Malamois. Look at this guy. Right? Mellow, fun dog. I was asking my followers if it's in the dog should they get next. Oh, you should definitely get one. So. If you want to see more, we can uh, follow us on the fur runner. The what? The, the underscore fur runner. The underscore fur runner. Runner. So she must own a four runner. I do. I have a four runner. Three of these. That's awesome. Give him a shot for some help. So that is the dog I'm thinking. Let me know what you think. This is my buddy Mike, we've known each other like 20 plus years. He's like one of the photographers in desert racing, off-road, like you talk the tip of Baja all the way, every race you could imagine. First three things that come to mind about overlanding and, and be real, 100% real, first three things. First three things, having power, having water, and having capabilities to get there. Tell us about what you do now. What I do now, well, I do everything. <laughs> I, um, I build rip my own rigs and everything like that, and then I have a magazine that I, I cover overlanding and off-roading and business and such. And then I also freelance for everybody. I do a lot of race reports, and I cover just every kind of racing you can imagine. And tell us about what's on the sleeve of your shirt, because this is an important one. Other Which one? Yeah. Orba. My magazine is in conjunction with Orba, who is the Off-Road Business Association. What we do is we're the ones who go in and fight for public access for motorized recreation. So we're the guys that go to court, we're the ones who do the lobbying, you know, we're the ones who get results for people when we're trying to save our off-road areas. So it's very important the way you vote politically because I'm telling you, they're trying to close off the lands. If you ride a mountain bike, you go hiking, you're on a horse, you're in a truck, and a motorcycle, and they try to make the guys with the engines look bad, but they really want to close it to everyone, and you really got to get educated, and you really got to learn about your land that we pay tax money to maintain and use, and uh, do, tell us a couple important aspects of that. Well, it's, it's critical. I mean, we're put under what I call a zero tolerance policy, so any bad actors who go out there and, and you know, don't act appropriately, we get labeled with that with our whole uh, our whole off, you know, community. 
So it's important that the whole community comes together, you know, the, the motorcycle riders, the overlanders, the racers, you know, even people who are out, you know, fly fishing and the hunters and all that. Everyone who uses motorized access, it's important that we, we come together and help to preserve that. So we're, we've got a, a bunch of programs. Uh, we've got a, a youth UTV impact that we're working on to try to educate new UTV owners on how to take care of the land and the, the proper etiquette when you're off-road, good trail manners, you know, being a good steward to the off-road. Um, you know, a lot of uh, people in, in, you know, the environmentalist group, they, they seem to think that we're tearing up the land, but we wouldn't be out there if we didn't love it ourselves. We're, we all love nature and we all try to preserve it the best way we can. Yeah, so thank you, Mike. High right. five. Yep. We'll see you later. Thanks, Let's go Gary. check out some more rigs and people. <laughs> All right, so we're over here at Rig Supply. Just listen for the heckle, that cackly laugh. And it'll be Mr. Uh, Denny himself. What's up, Bob? What's up, Jerry? Good to see you. So this is Jason, known as Taco Dust. Me. Tell us about what you do, and then we're gonna talk about you. Uh, I kind of, I do a lot around here. Mainly all the marketing, forward-facing branding, photo, video, um, a lot of the R and D. I build trucks, and I argue with Jerry every time we get together. So yeah, we have fun. Like, hey, what's the capital of Thailand? You want to see me do it? <laughs> Anyways, let's talk about your Raptor. Yeah, um, so I have your kit, uh, Raptor long travel kit. It's honestly the best driving kit on the market. I, that's how I sell it to my friends. Everybody was asking me, you know, why didn't you go wider? Why? It's just like, there's so many things we could talk about this, but at the end of the day, this truck allows me to push the truck as hard and way outside of my abilities and drives down the road like a stock Raptor. It's not wandering. It's not all over the place it just has a everything you buy a Raptor for and drive it off the lot for it keeps all of that all that DNA in there but it allows you to have in my opinion unlimited bottom out control and tunability for however if you're doing overlanding if you're just going out and you're building kind of a stock truck pre-runner chase truck whatever you want and also you want to be able to give you the keys to your wife and she can go take the kids to the grocery store that's what this kit does for me and that's why it's pretty much ruined every single truck <laughs> that I've had since then you know we got the Jeep and we got all these other cars but the Raptor is always something that's like you know what the Raptor you guys nailed it and you know that's why it's on our truck yeah so the same suspension we're starting to come out with the same kit for all the different platforms from Tacoma Tundra F-150 Silverado so awesome yeah and what's really cool about this truck Magnaflow exhaust KMC wheels air bump kit in the back Deaver springs go fast camper long travel front suspension on the Gen 2 Raptor what do you call the Raptor oh the Slapter yeah the Slapter because yeah. the Slapper on front long travel kit, right? So stoked to see you guys are doing that on all those platforms. And you're not taking the concept of like, let's just make everything out of proportion, as wide as possible. It doesn't even fit on trails anymore because it gives you the illusion that it works better. It's it's really having some restraint and making the truck work really well and giving it, keeping all the drivability, having it track down the road, but it's really the things that matter, like moving that bump stop outbound, giving you the most amount of usable travel and you know not ruining all the good things about the truck box. It's yeah. just so awesome to see that. And you know we build trophy trucks, we build off-road race trucks, we've raced, we've done all the races, we've won all the races, we put all the technology into knowing from a field standpoint like we own these trucks and we know what makes them perform well. We're not just building something that looks cool, just putting it to market to sell it and hearing complaints later. We have happy customers with this. So Jason, show us what Rig Supply does, and I really want to communicate to that audience your new product. Cool, let's head over there.
All right, so where we started here was just making the most bomber off-road swing out that mounts to your hitch. Every vehicle that is off-road capable comes with a hitch. We wanted to utilize that hitch. We didn't want to take anything away. Don't lose the hitch, use it. It's still tow rated. You can carry up to a 40 inch tire. You can add on all the things that suit your needs. Most popular for us is drop down cable. You can do fuel packs, propane, water, whatever you need. Um, and it's, it's just modular and if you don't need it, the camber crew on some of their vehicles, they run these when we go out on our overlanding trips. When we get back to the shop, pull it all off. You got a stock driving truck, you don't have extra length. It's just a modular system. And our new thing here for this year that we're launching is our off-road rated bike rack. We've just run the gamut of all the bike racks on the market. Bike racks are getting more expensive, more capable, longer wheelbases. So we wanted to make a full US made rack, made it all out of metal, all steel parts, a lifetime rack. It's, you know, it's a premium rack product, but the main thing here is we just wanted to have something that we could actually secure your wheel without damaging your fork, without damaging your frame or your wheels, and have something that's a symmetrical wheel cup that really just holds it in tight. So it's just been an awesome reception of this product. Everybody's been super stoked on it. We have more bike trays coming, and it's just really cool to see something um, that we've had in our minds we've wanted to bring to market for a long time for people that are going on off-road trips and bringing their rad bikes sick so you said it was all steel kind of made it sound like obviously it's stronger than anything but I noticed these badass billet clamps right here yeah like that's kind of a cool yeah yeah cool little uh, kind of like the cherry on top and that's what these guys are really good at doing yeah so, hey man thanks for the time we'll see you later yeah we'll see you at beer 30 right thanks all right let's go uh ooh, ooh. new toyota sequoia over here let's go check this bad boy out all right toyota's out here at the overland show and this is their new toyota sequoia things about this new Sequoia is that it's very, very similar to the Toyota Tundra suspension on the Gen 3 Tundra. So this is all the brand new vehicle and I think this is going to be a game changer. So it's basically a Tundra but with a pass-through. So you don't have the truck bed but it's an SUV. So for guys that want to go sleeping in their vehicle and not have to invest in tents and stuff, fold down those back seats and go for it. So take a peek at this thing real quick. So, as you saw the new Sequoia over there, they have a new Tundra here set up. This is Toyota's booth at the show. And when I glance over here, I see my buddy Mike Swears. And who is Mike Swears? Well, he's the guy that designs these trucks, and he does a phenomenal job. He also raced with me at the Mint 400 when Jay Leno and I won that race. So, let's get, let's go interrupt him. Mike, what's up, brother? It's good uh, seeing you. So, Mike here rode with me at the Mint 400. It was an awesome experience. Talk about what you do for Toyota. Uh, I wash windows and clean toilets. But no, I'm just kidding. I am uh, the executive chief engineer for our platform trucks. So that that means what you see because of this guy. It's kind of a big deal. Uh, it, it's a team. It's a team. It is a team. I'm just the guy that apologizes. For <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, been a, a, a great ride with the new platforms and the new trucks coming out. Yeah, so we were just checking out that new Toyota Sequoia. And uh, so what do you think? I think it's pretty badass because I'm just guessing here. But I think the suspension's the same, but it has full pass through. So for, like I was saying earlier, the guys that want to sleep in their vehicle and not have to invest in like tents and all the stuff, you have like kind of an all-in-one vehicle. There's a lot of space and a lot of utility that you can buy for your wife and she could drive it, but then you can take it out on the weekends. Yeah, and, and the great thing about that vehicle is when we combined our platforms, we took our three platforms together. I like to call Sequoia the love child of the Land Cruiser 300 and the, the new Tundra, and this is what you got. So we're not selling Land Cruiser any, anymore here, but now you have a three-row family vehicle with the same underpinning as that the Land Cruiser 300 has that we sell globally. Yeah, and as you know, Camberg, we do a lot of military and special ops suspension for the Land Cruiser 300. We already have billet upper arms and links. We already have a lower replacement with their slap or bump stop system and the long travel kit. So we're kind of jonesing to get one of them Sequoias and put all those parts to the test. 
I had long travel. I didn't know you were going to Yeah, it's kind of, just, kind of a little thing we're known for. I love mine. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. So. Oh, you guys saw that blue tundra. We'll try to mix in a photo here in this video. But Mike shipped his tundra out to us. What, what do they call that color? Voodoo blue. So voodoo blue. That's an iconic color that's been around in motorsports and sports cars and Toyota's like taking that color onto the tundra and it's amazing. Full long travel, Fox shocks, and what else have you done to it since we did? Uh, put a change bumpers. Uh, I, I don't know. Every month there's something new coming in it, but uh, yeah. So you know, rack rails, the whole works to, to make it. So it's mainly my go anywhere vehicle. To be honest, you know, I'd like to say I'm just running desert with it, but uh, it goes everywhere. It does everything I want it to do, and the suspension is uh, just kick ass. And it's, it's, uh, I've got 45. Thousand on it now. Oh, wow! And uh, when I say forty-five thousand, uh, I'm hard on my trucks. I ride them hard and put them away. Black. It's, it's had a hard life. Awesome. And if you saw it now, you would see that it has a hard life. That's good. But uh, yeah, between getting everything lit up and that, you know, just exploring at night, uh, whether it's in northern Michigan or, or out in Moab, we've had this truck all week. Yeah, so Mike lives in the Midwest, so he's not a West Coast desert race guy. He loves desert racing, but he lives back there, and I mean, he's seeing snow and elements and all the gnarly stuff, whole different type of terrain with mud and forest and stuff. So it's really cool to hear that just in a few short years, he's already put 45,000 miles on the truck, so it's pretty awesome. Yeah, well, cool, man. Thank you so much for your time. Right, brother. Great seeing you. We'll see him again at Beer 30. We'll crack some Cambridge beers later. So we're back at the Canberra booth. We just took a look at a few of the awesome rigs that are here at the Overland Show on Saturday. If you're in the area, come by on Sunday and check out these vehicles. There's so much to look at. Campers, vans, Broncos, Raptors. I mean, you've seen some of the vehicles. Anyways, Overland West.